So, at this stage, we don't need the color palette, so we can click here to see all the hidden layers and simply turn off the layer from here. We can also unlock and completely delete the layer using the backspace or delete key. The layer is deleted from the layers panel, but it is not deleted from the project itself. So don't worry, we can use the palette again if we need to. Alright, so for now, I'll delete it, and we can also close the grid by pressing the apostrophe key. And now, we're ready to start the animation. The first thing we're going to animate is the spheres. In order to make them move, we need to create keyframes. Keyframes are a fundamental concept in animation and motion graphics. In After Effects, keyframes are used to define the starting and ending points of an animation or transition. They are points in time that mark the position, size, rotation, opacity, and other properties of an element or layer. Keyframes are also used to control the speed and timing of an animation. By adjusting the distance between keyframes, you can control the speed of an animation. I cover this topic in depth in the free course I mentioned in the beginning of this course. If any of you guys want to learn more about it, you're more than welcome to watch it. You can find the link to the free course in the description below or in the PDF file that's in the main folder of the course you downloaded from me. Alright, to begin, let's select all the spheres while holding down the shift key so that we can select multiple layers at once. Next, make sure that the time indicator is at the beginning of the timeline. And finally, press P to open the position parameter because this is the parameter for which we will create keyframes. And now, we will tell After Effects to keep the spheres in their current position at this point in time. Therefore, we will click on the stopwatch and create the first keyframe. Next, we will move the time indicator to the second number one and move the spheres to the desired position while holding down the shift key to ensure a straight axis movement. This action will automatically create a new keyframe. And now, to preview our work, let's move the time indicator to the beginning of the timeline and press the spacebar. Good job, you have created your first animation. Let's place the time indicator at the beginning. Now I want to time the sphere's animation differently, so that they don't all move together. I want the first sphere to move to be yellow, then blue, and only then red. We need to create an overlapping action or an offset. To achieve this, we need to move our keyframes in the timeline. We will leave the yellow sphere where it is now, as it will be the first sphere to move. Now we'll move the layer of the blue sphere to start only after the yellow sphere has reached its second point. But because I moved the entire layer, there is an empty part in the animation, and I can't see the blue sphere. To prevent this from happening, we will only move the keyframes and not the entire layer. To do this, let's select all the keyframes, or we can click the parameter here. Now we can move these keyframes here while holding down the shift key. This way, the keyframes will stick to the end of the yellow sphere's keyframes. Now let's do the same thing with the keyframes of the red sphere. We will select all of them and move them to the time when the blue sphere has already reached its last point. If we watch the animation again, we will see that the spheres are now moving one after the other as we wanted. The next step in our animation is to match the animation of the letter A to the scale animation we created. Doing this for scale and rotation is very simple, but creating the stretch text animation can be a bit more challenging. As you can see, if I stretch this layer in this way, I won't be able to create the effect I want. Let's see how to create this correctly. As you can see in the example on the screen, in Illustrator, using the Create Outlines function, we can turn any text layer into a shape with a path. After that, we can move and change that path. Alright, and now, in order to do this in After Effects, we need to right-click on the text layer, go to Create, and choose Create Shapes from Text. Now we have a new layer in which the text has become a simple shape layer with a path. We can delete this text layer. Now, let's change the color of the layer to none. Now we have a path that we can change the shape of. Let's see how to do it. Before we begin, 
Let's get closer and position the screen in a way that will be comfortable for us to work on this part. Let's open the grid and select the pen tool. At the moment, we can see small points, and if we select one of them, we can move it wherever we want. I'll press Ctrl Z. I can also choose multiple points. I'll hold down the Alt key, and now I can select several points. I can also move all four of these points. I'll hold down the Alt key, and now I can select all of these points as well. Now let's see what happens if I want to move the entire right side to the side. So I'll press Alt and select all the points in this section and then move the points here. Note that the letter is stretched incorrectly. It happens because there are not enough points here. So let's create these points together. To do it accurately, we will use guides. Let's get a little closer. We can enlarge this panel like this. Now to create the guides, we need to bring out the rulers using the control R shortcut. Now, to create a guide, simply click here and drag the mouse down. And now, we need to lock them through view, and then choose Lock Guides. And here, the guides are locked, and we can create the points. Let's position ourselves on top of the layer's path. When we see the mouse icon change to a plus, we'll know that clicking on the path will create a point. So, let's create a few points here. We can select and delete points using Backspace or Delete. We can zoom in a bit more and align the points. After that, to hide the guide, we can use a useful shortcut, Control and the semicolon key. Pressing the keyboard shortcut again will bring back the guides. Finally, let's press Ctrl R to hide the rulers too. Alright, so now let's stretch the text. First, I'll explain how it works, and then we'll animate the path together. So, I'll move here a bit so I can select the point. Now I'm holding down the Alt key and selecting all the points on this side except for this one. Next, I move the path sideways while holding down the shift key. Cool, so I will press Ctrl Z to undo the action, and let's animate this path together. So, the first thing we need to do is find its parameter in the layer itself. As you can see, there are two paths here, one for this part of the letter, and one for this part of the letter. We need to animate both of these paths. Instead of manually opening all of these parameters, we can simply select the layer and type path in the search bar. We will then press enter and see both paths open conveniently. Now we will time the animation of the letter's paths to the animation of the red sphere. Let's set the preview back to fit and see where the animation of the red sphere starts. To do this, we will select the layer of the red sphere and press the U key to see its keyframes. Now we see that the animation of the red sphere starts from the second number two. So let's move the time indicator to this keyframe while holding down the shift key. Now let's select the layer of the letter A and type path in the search bar, press enter, and now we'll tell After Effects that from the second, the path will be in the shape it is currently in. Because there are no additional keyframes before these keyframes, the letter will be in this shape throughout this time. And now let's move the time indicator to second number 3, at the same moment when the red sphere finishes its animation, and change the shape of the letter to the shape we want it to be. We will hold down the Alt key, select all the points on this side. Make sure we are not selecting this point. And now let's drag the path here while holding down the Shift key. After that, we will now press and hold the Alt key and select all the points on this side. Let's move these points here. We can also change the position of these points upward. Let's select this point, hold the Shift key, and also select this point. Now let's move both of the points we selected earlier upward. 
Now let's select only this point. Hold the Alt key, select only this point, and move it while pressing Shift. Finally, let's select this point and move it here while holding Shift. Now, these two keyframes tells After Effects that at this point in time, the design of the letter's path will look like that. And in this keyframe, the design of the letter looks like this. Alright, let's move on. Let's close the layers, set the preview to fit, and close the grid. And now, we can switch to the selection tool and see all the animation we have created so far. Looks nice. The next step in our animation is to synchronize the scale and rotation animations. Let's begin by timing the rotation animation. First, we should select the layer of the blue sphere and press U to see its keyframes. As we can see in the final animation, the letter should be upside down from the start of the animation. The letter rotates as the blue sphere rises upward. Therefore, we need to reach the point where the blue sphere is already up, then press R to see the rotation parameter and set the rotation of the letter at this time. We will then click on the stopwatch without changing the value of this parameter. And at this point in time, when the blue sphere is at the bottom, the rotation will be, let's say, minus 180. During this time, the letter will be upside down, and after this keyframe, the letter will start rotating until it reaches the value we set for it at this time. Now, both animations are synchronized at the same time points. Let's see how it looks. Looks great. Now, let's animate the scale animation. We already know that the size of the letter should be this size to when the yellow sphere rises. And we also know that it takes one second for the yellow sphere to complete its animation. Therefore, we will set the scale parameter of this layer to the current value. And now we go back in time, which is when the animation begins at second zero and set a different value for the scale parameter, such as 50 or 60. Next, we will close the layer, expand the panel and show all the parameters of all the layers. To do this, we need to ensure that we don't select any layer and then press U. And now let's move on to the next part and learn how to make this entire animation play seamlessly in a perfect loop.